Jazz is a music of innovation. It's a music of improvisation. Uh, and to me, the connection between the Charles River Museum of Industry and Innovation is a perfect match for what jazz is all about. The Boiler House Jazz Series that Ken asked me to um, help him curate is, is really exciting because there's more to it than just booking an artist. Uh, you're booking two separate artists, really, and uh, trying to make something different happen than you would ordinarily see at some club or theater someplace else, which is a kind of a set thing. The, the idea of placing jazz in a museum of innovation and industry is just, uh, a, I think it's pretty great pairing because jazz is a music of innovation. Jazz is a music of improvisation, of spontaneity, uh, of experimentation. And that's what innovation is. Innovation is uh, trying new things, seeing if they're gonna work. Uh, then on top of that, you have this uh, series happening in this spectacular room with amazing acoustics, with 40 some odd foot ceilings, where the sound just, uh, you know, surrounds you. You, you play a few notes and, and it just envelops you and you uh, get that back. It's a feedback loop as a performer. You hear the sound and you're inspired to keep playing and, and at, at even a more, um, I don't know, creative level. So, you know, we've talked a little bit about the, the fact that the musicians who play here love it, love playing here. We haven't talked so much about the audience reaction that we get, and I think uh, it's important to, uh, important to us for the audience to have a good experience. And what is incredible to me is the feedback we get from the audiences who come to this series, who believe that this is something that they maybe haven't experienced before, and that they are so happy that they came to hear a concert here. Um, for all of the reasons we've talked about, uh, for the reasons of the acoustics, for the musicians that we choose, for the spontaneity, for the creativity, they hear something new. And, uh, you know, there, there are a lot of people maybe who are not as interested in hearing new things. They want to hear what they've already heard before. That's not really what this series is for, who this series is for. This series is for people who want to hear something different, something fresh, something uh, that's going to uh, perk up their ears and they're going to say, wow, I, I, I never heard that before. Uh, the best compliment is I've never heard anything like it before. And that's what happens in this room. Good evening, everybody. We're very happy to be here at the Charles River Museum of Industry and Innovation. We're very happy to uh, have this opportunity because as performers, we don't have so many opportunities these days. It's a difficult time and, uh, well, we're gonna keep things positive, you know, because there has been some positive developments. There's been some uh, 
positive developments, for instance, in, uh, for women in America. And we're going to hope that goes on and on and uh, do a little dedication for all the women that have been holding it together throughout this time. This is Ray Charles's Hallelujah, I Love Her So. sounds so beautiful. I hope you all can see it out where you're at because we're in this fantastic museum filled with the most fascinating 
objects that represent a lot of history from the industrial age and represent the progress and the efforts of so many people. Uh, our friend Ken Field was making a, a connection between the idea of innovation and improvisation in jazz, uh, which is beautiful. Um, another thing, when I come into a museum like this, though, I also see the history. And, and, I, and when I think of jazz, I think of history and style and, uh, and tradition. So we're going to touch on a lot of traditional things and older songs and things that uh, I think fit perfectly in this environment. So uh, what do you think? Want to try one?
version of the Tennessee Waltz. All right. <laughs> the Tennessee Waltz, that goes back a little ways, you know, but when I'm in a place like this with all this wonderful old stuff, I think of these old songs. Here's another kind of old time favorite we like to do. This is called The Glory of Love. <laughs> Thank 
Well, all right. The Glory of Love. It's an old song, but there's, there's a, actually a version Otis Redding did totally different later on, and you would not be wasting your time if you checked out Otis Redding's version of that beautiful song. Ah, let's see here. Speaking of beautiful songs, you know, I have a confession to make. We don't just play jazz. We love jazz. We love everything, though. And this song comes from the tradition of country music. That's right. We're going to play for you our rendition of a song made famous by the great country singer Jim Reeves. This is called He'll Have to Go.
I was saying we like to do all kinds of music and I've been lucky to be playing with this fellow. This is Marty Ballou on bass, by the way. Uh, I've been lucky to have been playing with Marty for quite a few years and I think it all started in the band of a fellow that's been a great uh, influence and, and a, a great force you know in New England and in the world a guitarist named Duke Robillard and uh, Marty was playing with Duke and I joined up at one point and uh, we went all over the world and that was a real big thing for me and one of the great pleasures of the playing in that situation was that we would uh, get to back up also many great old blues and jazz musicians and one of the singers we worked with was a fellow named Jimmy Witherspoon and uh, well we're gonna try to do one of Spoon's tunes right now <laughs> Thank you. 
by Jimmy Witherspoon. And uh, we sure miss Spoon, but we'll keep on playing the songs. Just like this one. There's another old song, and I've been doing it for a long time. And this was written by a fellow they called The Great One back in another time. Marty, I think you know who The Great One is, huh? Mm, yes, I do. <laughs> well, the great one was Jackie Gleason, and uh, a lot of people remember his show, The Honeymooners, but before that, he had the Jackie Gleason show, and he penned the title song, the theme song himself, Melancholy Serenade. <laughs> Thank you. 
that's the melancholy serenade. Thank you, Marty. I, the same to you. <laughs> well, let's pick it up again. And once again, being in this wonderful museum, the Charles River Muse Museum of Industry and Innovation. And by the way, I would like to mention that our program here is uh, sponsored by a lot by uh, the Jazz Generation program of keyedup.org. I think I said that right. Anyway, we would like to thank them and everybody who supports. And that's right, you can support too. I think they're showing it on the screen right there, but you can go to charlesrivermuseum.org and, uh, well, you can, you know, let it rip. <laughs> no, not really. If you can give something, uh, you know, that would be much appreciated, but we're just happy you're here, and we're happy we're here, too. So let's do another good old-fashioned oldie. This is called When I Grow Too Old to Dream. Kiss me twice, kiss me three times, and kiss me again. I never, 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 never let us part. No, baby. And when I grow too old to dream, your love will live in my heart. <laughs> Thank you. 
again. Ah, that's not true at all. <laughs> well, all right. We're sure enjoying this, you know. I would love to have a, all you people right here with us. Not well, just, a, else. you know, also because they could see all this cool stuff. There's like the first ever vacuum cleaner over there. And it's like a hand pump one, I think. You got to push the thing back and forth, you know. And uh, I know over that, that would go over real big in my house. <laughs> but they got, there's some amazing cars. And it's all related to this city, Waltham, Massachusetts. Engine number one. There's Waltham, engine number one. There's stuff from the Polaroid factory that was here. There's all kind, and also a big history of, of watchmaking. The first, I think, if I'm saying this right, but it's the first automatic or mechanized machines for producing some of this stuff. And but the you don't have to know any of that. It just looks really cool <laughs> if you come and check it out. Yeah, right. So let's see, what can we do now? I had a list down here. Oh, I know. We're gonna change the mood for a minute. Thank <laughs> you. 
Sometimes you just feel that way. <laughs> but really, honestly, I feel pretty good. I'm very happy to be here at the Charles River Museum of Industry and Innovation. Innovation. Don't forget, you can feel free to go to their website. I believe it's charlesrivermuseum.org. And it's possible to show your appreciation to uh, them and us. We're going to divide up the pot afterwards. and. Every good innovation gonna, deserves a donation. Uh, there you have it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, if we get a lot, we're going to go out afterwards and just go wild on the town. Well, I, 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 I actually, maybe not we'll, we'll, uh, until, uh, until we're past this pandemic. <laughs> but we'll so, do it in our hearts. That's right. So in the meantime, let's, let's uh, change the pace a little bit. We were talking about innovation. One of the great innovators in American music in the early days of jazz was a songwriter and a character. Some people even said he had comedic qualities, but he was a very serious musician, very serious composer, and that's the great Fats Waller. And uh, I think he wrote this one, I hope so, after I said all that, right? <laughs> this is Ain't Misbehaving. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
I was saying before, we wanted to keep it positive. <laughs> so, but <clears throat> I also uh, have been listening lately to a song. Uh, well, I was listening to an instrumental version of this song by the great saxophonist Ike Quebec. But I went back and listened to the original song, which was sung by Rudy Valley. It was sung by Bing Crosby. And some people called it the theme song of the Great Depression. So, <laughs> we thought that would be a wonderful thing to cheer you up with tonight. This is our version of Brother, Can You Spare a Dime? Well, that's also good in terms of asking for you to go to charlesrivermuseum.org and sparing us a dime i think there you go you know you can make your don it tells you how to make a donation there i won't keep going on about that we're just happy that you're here and uh let's see if i can remember how to get through this <laughs> Mm-hmm. 
Well, it's just like bringing the depression back. <laughs> oh, no, no, really. Um, we like to play all kinds of things, and I love those deep moods and, and uh, those minor key songs, but uh, we like to have fun, too. And, and uh, here's one we started doing a while ago. Maybe it's a little unexpected, but we're going to go back into the world of country and do what I understand was Bob Wills' theme song, The Rose of San Antonio. There actually are a few people here, some very 
very VIP special people are here with us. No, actually, it's the, the film crew and the lights, the sound, the organizers, and we'd like to thank everyone here at the Charles River Museum of Industry and Innovation. We'd also like to once again thank the Jazz Generation Program from keyedup.org for helping to sponsor us and uh, so we can go out on the town afterwards. And, uh, <laughs> and um, well, we're just going to keep on going until they tell us to stop. We're expecting to hear one of those old-fashioned steam whistles or something like that, you know, because this place is full of those things. But um, in the meantime, you know, I remember I was listening to, to uh, Ken Field, one of the organizers and, and curators of this event, speaking about jazz and talking about innovation. And another thing that comes to my mind about jazz is, is style. You know, there's some cats that they might not have made up anything new, but they sure had a unique way of doing what they did. And I was listening to a fellow named Morris Lane. He's not the most well-known guy these days, but Morris Lane had a way of playing summertime. And I'm going to try to see if I can capture a little bit of his mood on summertime. <laughs>
Thank you, Marty. That was our first time trying that. But uh, I'll be looking at it later. Because this stays posted on YouTube, I believe, right? After We're streaming live right now. How's my hair? <laughs> no. But uh, we're streaming live, and uh, but it'll stay posted, I believe. I believe you can come back to it later on and, and listen to it. And, of course, you can listen to it again and again. And each time you can just donate more and more money every time. Yeah. <laughs> I like your style. I like your style. You know, and just go to charlesrivermuseum.org. But more importantly, when things get better in the world, and they're going to get better, um, you got to come here and just dig this place because it's really out of sight. And uh, I mean, I just particularly like this kind of old-fashioned stuff, just like I like the old-fashioned music. Um, so where are we at now? We still have a little bit of time. Wow. No. Really? We're over? They're not going to cut us off? Well, for 120, well, maybe we'll do a... a <laughs> we got in a lot of the ones we wanted to do. Why don't we do a... Why don't we, here, here's one. Well, speaking of innovation, you know, another thing that jazz players would do, they would take the chord changes to one song, and they would innovate by putting a new melody on top. And I think that's what Wild Bill Moore did with the chord changes of Sunny Side of the Street when he made this composition called Bubbles. Thank you. 
sounds like we might we don't want to overstay our welcome although I could stay all night here at the Charles River Museum of Industry and Innovation but in fact that would be a good idea Can we just lock the doors and I want to play with all this stuff <laughs> Get the printing press going. you know but there's a couple songs that may if we if we do have time maybe we'll get this last one or two in for you here's one uh, we once again I was saying that Marty and I go back playing a long ways, and this is a duet that we recorded a long time ago, uh, a version of a traditional uh, spiritual song. And we were inspired by the great bassist George de Vivier and the saxophonist Arnett Cobb, who recorded something like this, a version of Deep River. Hope you, <clears throat> we sure hope you have enjoyed yourself this evening and uh, in the comfort of your own home. It's not the same as being here, I have to say, um, but I'm sure it's nice. And I'm glad you chose to spend the evening with us. Like I was saying earlier, uh, it's been tough times for 
performers and everybody, but we did want to remain positive. And uh, just like we did that song earlier from the Depression, well, there was another song from that same time, and I think some people had a different reaction to the circumstances and wrote happier things. And this song has gone on to uh, become a part of a lot of different... Uh, it's been significant in a lot of parts of history, including it was popular during the repeal of Prohibition also. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <a good idea. laughs> so this would be the happy days are here again. Thank you. This is Marty Ballou on the bass. Gordon Beetle. And uh, you know your name, so now we know each other. Don't be a stranger, and we'll see you at the Charles River Museum. Sometime soon. Of Industry and Innovate. Get down here and innovate. I know you can do it. <laughs> 